2019, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that 39 million workers made less than $15 an hour. Today, nearly two-thirds of Americans live paycheck to paycheck with no savings to fall back on. Across the country, it's clear that people are struggling financially, and the pandemic has only added fuel to the fire. Millions have been furloughed, laid off, or have accepted a pay freeze, as many sectors struggle to get back to pre-pandemic profits. But for many in the ultra-wealthy category, it's been an exceptional year. From March 2020 to February 2021, the combined wealth of billionaires in the U.S. rose by 44 percent, totaling $4.3 trillion, according to data compiled by Forbes. The founder and CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos, saw his fortune increase by $76 billion during this 11-month period. The U.S. billionaire class, the 660 billionaires in the United States have seen their wealth go up $1.3 trillion in one year during the pandemic. And that's a lot of money, but just for perspective, if you took all the wealth of all the households in the bottom half of the U.S., that would be about $2.4 trillion. So it's almost double the wealth of the bottom half of the society. That's Chuck Collins, the director of the Program on Inequality at the Institute for Policy Studies a nonprofit think tank based in Washington, D.C. He says that the current capitalism-driven market feeds into this growing income inequality. But there are initiatives that can help to close this gap. It just doesn't have to be this way. And I think there's a little bit of defeatism where people say, well, isn't this the way it's always been? Actually, yes, wealthy people have gained and hidden their wealth, but it's kind of accelerating in the current environment from what I can see. Over the last four decades, economic prosperity has become increasingly concentrated. Today, the richest 5% of Americans make up two-thirds of all wealth in the country. In 2019, even before the pandemic, if you added up the fortunes of Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, and Warren Buffett, you would have more money than the bottom 50% of Americans combined. But why are these extremes in wealth possible? Is it fair that so few people can hold on to so much of the pie? Some billionaires believe that this is the right model, and their success trickles down into the economy and ultimately benefits the masses. I think some of them would say, well, they're the engines of the economy, they're job creators, and we shouldn't overtax them or we shouldn't tax them at all. And some of them would say, well, we do pay a lot of taxes already. But in terms of the actual percentage of their income, both the companies and the wealthy individuals, they're paying a smaller share than any time in the last 60, 70 years. So it's been a really banner time to be in those wealthy groups. Some who do fall within this high income bracket also argue that they give back many millions each year through philanthropy. But do these charitable donations and scholarships make up for the lack of taxes paid? There's really useful work that's funded by charity and philanthropy, but it's not a substitute for a fair tax system where the wealthy pay their fair share or public government investments. You know, charity's never going to build, you know, a water treatment plant. It's not going to fund the alleviation of poverty. It's not going to pay for higher education for millions of people or education. It's not that much money, and yet we're kind of distracted and almost deflected from paying attention to what needs to happen. So, you know, yes, let's celebrate the fact that billionaires are giving money to a, maybe a food bank and not just buying another yacht, but maybe we'd be better off if they paid their fair share of taxes and we as a democratic society could decide what's the best use of the money. The reality is that current tax laws and loopholes aid the rich. For example, income from investments is taxed at around 23 percent, while income from traditional work is taxed at 43 percent. And these benefits extend past individuals. In 2018, Amazon paid zero dollars in federal income tax and received $129 million in tax rebates from the federal government. Collins says that some of these laws have gotten so loose that certain states in the U.S. have turned into tax havens for companies. I think there's a concept that wealthy people in the U.S. used to take their money offshore and take it to some Caribbean island or a Swiss bank account. 
And that's a little bit of an outdated notion now. And part of that's because we have states like Delaware and South Dakota that have very low standards. They have low standards in terms of what they require. You know, Delaware, you can create a limited liability company, and you don't have to say who you are. So if you're trying to hide money in the U.S., you create a Delaware LLC and park your money there. Or South Dakota, you can create a trust that will literally live for centuries to sequester your wealth. Collins highlights that there's an entire sector built on helping the rich get richer. Professionals ranging from tax and estate attorneys to wealth managers and accountants, all working together to get their affluent clients the lowest tax bill possible. They create these fictional trusts. They create tax loopholes. And in a sense, they help them protect and preserve their money and create dynasties of wealth for future generations. You know, I think of people with $30 million or more, what wealth planners call the ultra-high net worth households. Their share of the wealth pie keeps growing. There were maybe a 1,000 family offices around the world, mostly in the U.S. Now there are 10,000 family offices. These are offices that help affluent. Wealthy families, you, you, you know, you really need to have about a quarter of a billion dollars as an extended family for it to be worth having a family office where you have all your wealth management services in-house, if you will. But that's one sign that there's this wealth protection racket is just growing bigger and bigger. So what can be done to close this wealth gap and ensure fair taxation? Collins believes it begins with the enforcement of the law, and this means bulking up the IRS so the ultra-rich can't get away with paying less by abusing gray areas in the tax code. Here in the United States, the Internal Revenue Service, the agency everyone loves to hate, but their capacity has been decimated. Their ability to trace all these tax dodges and all the sort of complex ways in which the rich gain their money, you need to have skilled expertise in the oversight process to do that. So that's number one, investing in enforcement. Another big step is passing stricter laws that get rid of known loopholes like lower tax rates for stocks, inheritance trusts, and larger assets that have not yet been sold. However, this is up to individual Americans electing politicians who will work to fix this broken system despite any powerful interests lobbying against them. We can tell our elected officials, look, there's no good reason for these systems. We should have a tax system where the rich don't have their own set of rules and they don't have their own tax providers. And I think that's a key part of this is this is not a sustainable system. You can't have this sort of gross imbalance of wealth. You can't have one set of rules for the super rich. What we're doing is creating kind of an oligarchy or a plutocracy, a society controlled by money. Capitalism, in its current most destructive form, is bringing us to the brink of human survival and unacceptable levels of inequality. And so it's time to rethink the systems and fix the design of how we live together. And, you know, we shouldn't have societies with such grotesque extremes of poverty and wealth. To find out more about this topic and our guest, Chuck Collins, head to viewpointsradio.org. Also, check out his book, The Wealth Hoarders, How Billionaires Pay Millions to Hide Trillions, available online and in bookstores now. For more behind the scenes, search Viewpoints Radio on Twitter and Facebook. This segment was written and produced by Amira Zaveri, studio production by Jason Dickey. I'm Marty Peterson. Viewpoints returns in just a moment. Saving for taxes is hard for many business owners, perhaps especially independent contractors, artists, and entrepreneurs. Some business owners simply can't stop themselves from spending all the money as it comes in, then incurring more and more unsecured debt to pay their taxes and other obligations. Those businesses are sinking, even if they don't know it yet. But Help for Debtors is available now. Business Debtors Anonymous is a 12-step recovery program with meetings every day, where members support one another as they stop incurring new unsecured debt. At meetings, recovering members share how their lives have been transformed. 
Their stories will be reassuringly similar to your own. This 12-step program offers hope, clarity, and serenity, along with immediately usable tools to support better management of your personal and business finances. Find more information and request free program literature at helpfordebtors.org. That's helpfordebtors.org. And that's Viewpoints for this week. Viewpoints is a production of MediaTrax Communications. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to learn more about upcoming shows. And find a library of past programs on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. Plus, you'll always find previous segments and more information about our guests at viewpointsradio.org. Join us again next week for another edition of Viewpoints. Coming up next week. The astronauts have to do around two hours of exercise every single day so they keep the loss of muscle and bone as minimal as possible. What exactly happens to our bodies in space? What we do and don't know. Then, when you're thinking about applying to graduate school or your career, it doesn't really matter where you started college, it does matter where you graduated from college. Examining the hefty price tag of traditional higher education. I'm Marty Peterson. And I'm Gary Price. These stories in depth on your public affairs magazine, Viewpoints.